Okay, so today we are working on Pops 1988 Chevy, uh, I believe it's 2500. Uh, this has been sitting for a while. We had it running and it sat, so of course it doesn't run now. So we're going to try to get it going. Well, I should say we've swapped in a 350 in the past. Uh, Edelbrock carburetor, 650 I think. Um, anyway, the carburetor's all gummed up and the fuel lines are not hooked up and probably shot anyway, filled with junk and who knows what else. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean the carburetor. We're going to run, just put a gas can here and run a fuel line to the manual fuel pump and uh, just try to get it running. Um, I got a battery charging in there. So this, we'd bypass the manual fuel pump at one point and ran an electrical one. Um, and bypass the steel lines, just trying to get things going. So now we're gonna just try to get it all running like like normal, but we need to know the little crank. Um, we need to know that the engine's not seized. It's been sitting for probably two years. Uh, so like I said, the first step is going to be getting that carb cleaned. So I just started disassembling it and uh, we'll go check that out right now. All right, so here it is. I've uh, just been trying to get things moving again because everything was like really seized up. Nothing a little WD-40 can't fix. Um, and I just pulled all the screws off of this before I decided to uh, <coughs> film. So let's get this split in half and see what we got. Look at that. The ethanol gas is bad news. All right, so I'm gonna fully disassemble everything, everything, and soak it in some carb cleaner, because that's pretty rough. So I'm taking off the Torx bolts for the primary and secondary Venturi's right now, and now removing the pump jet housing. And of course removing everything and setting it aside. So I end up leaving on the gaskets that are there because I don't have a rebuild kit and I'm just trying to get this thing running. Everything ends up working out fine, but you should take all those gaskets off, scrape it clean, use a new rebuild kit, but I did not do that in this case. Now I'm removing the pump plunger spring. The pump plunger is actually in the top half, it's in the bottom right there. Okay, now we're removing the floats with the needle. Those come out together. The needle seat with its little filter thing are still in place. That's actually the float lever pin that I'm pushing out right now. Now we're moving the needle seat. Well, seats, plural, because there's two of them. And by the way, don't hold me to any of this terminology because, well, I'm, I don't know, I'm doing my best. So now I'm removing the step-up pistons and metering rods, and honestly, I would do these first before you even take the screws out to disassemble the halves. 
because it would just make more sense and you could protect the needles and everything would be good because you also have to put these in last after you put the two halves together or it's really difficult to combine the two. Now I'm taking off this little S-hook of the pump, plunger, cup, and spring. I don't know. Feels springy. Now I'm doing the little butterfly guys. They're just flathead screws. So here I wish I had some trick to tell you. Just take some good pictures and try to remember how you took this apart because it's got to go back in a certain way and the spring's got to be on in a certain way in order for everything to talk happy. So you'll see in a minute when I try to do it. I'm dragging out my disassembly process in case you need to like see it and know how it goes back together because I looked at my own videos several times trying to figure out how the heck I got this uh, you know how to get it back together because it was really difficult to get back together These rods were so gummed up, they almost didn't want to come out. I mean, I'm really having to put some force on them to get them to slide out. Oh. I've later thought back to this part, and I hope that there's not little O-rings that are supposed to go on those rods, because if there were some, they're totally dis like disintegrated and nothing is left of them. But I, I don't think it was, and the carburetors aren't great now, so yeah. I have to assume that there's not. So at this point, disassembly is complete, so now it's time to like clean everything really well. Lots of carb cleaner, lots of scrubbing, no particulate matter floating around that's gonna clog up jets. Just, you gotta make sure everything's really clean. Carburetors have always been really scary to me, but uh, mainly because I didn't understand them. And the most important thing is to make sure everything is super clean. The small parts do really benefit from being soaked in carb cleaner. I mean, it uh, really helps eat off whatever's built up on them. I sprayed these rods with card cleaner. Uh, carb? Did I say card? carb cleaner but they ended up needing to be scrubbed with like brillo pads to get them clean enough you'll see that in just a minute and you could really get anal with this cleaning and i highly recommend you do because i'm not good about that but it would really help so this is actually a bore cleaner for rifles and it worked really well for cleaning out the, the holes that these shafts go into. And I didn't show it, but I've actually dumped out the carb cleaner and put fresh cleaner it on those little parts a couple times. So, reassembly, pretty self-explanatory through here. Until we get to this part.
So like I said, I hope you took good pictures of this part and how they work, how they interact with each other, because it was a pain in the butt. I edited out a lot of me like trying to figure out how to put this back together. I should have paid more attention, but that's why I'm telling you so you know and don't make the mistakes that I did. But this is how it should work. Butterflies back on. I don't even think that's a technical name for those. Yay, happy. These are auxiliary valves and weights, and they just sit there. But I apologize for my sniffling. I don't know what's going on, but it was annoying the crap out of me. Anyway, secondary and now primary venturis back in. Followed by the pump jet. Now tighten down all the Torx bolts on the Venturis and pump jets. I got distracted and didn't, um, and it screwed me up. So just make sure to do all those now. And also, like I said, do not assemble the step-up pistons and rods yet because you won't be able to put the two halves together. So now I'm putting in the seats for the needles to go into, which ride on the float. And here are the floats and the needles, and they literally just sit on there because these floats are going to be held in place with a pin. You shouldn't have to hammer those pins in, I was just getting impatient. To tightening everything up and I actually tried to put the two halves together which I didn't put in this video to not make me look like an idiot and now I just told on myself but anyway how's it feel to drive some real power <laughs> a buddy of mine just drove my Suzuki GT500 which he has a Harley 1200 which is much faster than my bike so I'm giving him crap about it anyway here I took out the metering rods and and step-up pistons because they shouldn't have been put in in the first place because they need to happen they need to be assembled after the two halves are together like i'm doing now i also just assembled the pump plunger and spring assembly in there like i had to sl slide it in because i'd already put the two halves together anyway just make sure that's in before you put the halves I believe that's the pump arm and connector link, connecting link, uh, but I didn't get a good video of me actually putting it on, so I took a video of it after it was assembled, so you can understand the way that that arm should be articulated. And since I didn't take a video of the bolts coming off, I guess I didn't put one of them going back on, but just bolt the two abs together, Jesus. So here is me trying to put the car back on while videoing at the same time and I can't so we just flash forward and like magic the truck runs yay you did a great job uh, actually I'm super thrilled that this ran and worked well because I didn't want to have to buy a rebuild kit and I got lucky so thanks for watching
Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments down in the comments below. Thank you.